Hey, Dustin Tibbetts here, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth Managers. This is our FinTip series, a really quick series that we do to teach you something new about investing, personal finance, whatever it may be, and then get out of your way so you can go get your dough straight. Hopefully we help you somewhere along the way here. This one's for the kids. And if you're watching this, you're a little bit older, share it with the kids. I know I come to you every day. It's sort of like marketing. I wear the shirt. I hope you keep us in mind. Of course, I'm happy to help if you have kids or you are younger and you're watching this. But today, all marketing aside, Please, this is just to really illustrate the people that are younger how easy it can be to actually save for retirement. Everybody that I talk to says, man, if I had only done this when I was younger, so today I'm gonna give you the hard numbers, five minutes, real quick, I'll be super quick with you. Here's what we're gonna do. We are going to say, what if you could turn back the clock? Or what happens if you are 19 years old today and you'd like to retire at 65? We're also gonna just play around and say, 19 years old, and you want to retire at 60 because maybe you think 65 sounds like it's old. It's not old, but you know, you think it's old because you're 19 right now. <laughs> so here we go. Okay, so here's what we're going to focus on. Uh, you're 19. You got nothing saved for retirement. I'm going to assume you've got zero dollars put away at any point. You're just starting off fresh. This is all you have. I'm going to assume you're looking for $50,000 a year in income in today's dollars. Now, what this means is whatever the buying power of $50,000 is today, is what you want to have in retirement. In reality, the $50,000 by the time you retire is gonna be more like $130,000. But it'll still have the same purchasing power as 50,000 today. That's what we're doing. We're very unique about the way that we calculate these numbers here. And so we'll do this. We're assuming that you're gonna get the current, uh, the current average social security, which is $1,500 a month or $18,000 a year. It will be there for you. Go work your jobs, you pay it, you will get paid back. It may not be much more than that, if any, but uh, that's the current average. So we're gonna assume that you're gonna get that as a part of your retirement. So what we're saying is you need 50,000. You are going to have this $1,500 or 18,000 a year from something probably social security, maybe it's a, you work as in the government, uh, you're a teacher or something, you get some kind of a pension. We're gonna assume the world is perfect for now and you're going to get that uh, part in there, okay? Now, here's what we're also gonna do. We're going to pretend inflation is 3%, right? In reality, we're gonna adjust as we go. I really dislike how people say, well, you gotta save this much and, and just factor inflation at two or 3% or whatever, and then just adjust the numbers, right? We don't know. So let's adjust as we go. I'll explain in a second. Uh, that's what we're gonna do. Now we're gonna assume returns, hang in there. <laughs> we're gonna assume returns of 9.7%. Oh boy, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> don't, don't go in the comment section and give me grief just yet. Why 9.7%? because as I'll show you in a minute, we're going to adjust our deposits for inflation. We are not going to make contributions to our account and then pretend that inflation eats it away and factor it again on the back end. If you're young and watching this, no worries. I just focus on the numbers, but a lot of people give us grief for this. I'm gonna show you real quick. Here's the S&P to uh, 500 total return over the lifetime of the S&P 500. Dividends included every piece of data you can go back and get. What I want you to focus on right here is the annualized returns. What is the average? 9.72%. This does not account for inflation. These are just raw numbers. The market actually returns about 10% a year on average in its entire lifespan. You may disagree with that now in the short term, and okay, I can understand, but 9.72%. What we're going to do is we're going to just say 9.7%, and we're gonna back out 3% for inflation. And essentially, this is as if you are making 6.7% after inflation dollars, or inflation-adjusted dollars, okay? That's where we came up with that number. It is completely accurate. It is more than fine to use that number because we're adjusting for inflation. So let's get to the meat of it. 19 years old, 65 is the age that you wanna retire. What does that come out to? You need, oh, you gotta save $1,561 this year or over the next 12 months. Now you're gonna raise that by the rate of inflation. We're factoring 3% right now, but every year I make a big deal out of our customers is whatever the inflation rate was, I'll, I tell them what it is so that they know what they've gotta shoot for. That number is variable, right? So 1561 is the magic number there. What does that even come out to? 1561, that's $30.01 a week. Wow. I wish I could go back in time and put $30.01 away a week to hit that number. Um, all right, 
how much you're going to end up with. If you follow this and you go along with this and you're going to end up with $1.708 million. 1.708, let's just go 1.7 million, right? That's going to be your number there, uh, inflation adjusted to get you to that point there. Let's pretend you want to retire at, at uh, 60, 60 years old. How much harder does it get? Man, that is so cool to see how young, uh, how being young really helps there. $1,500, you know, that is just crazy. Um, all right, 2401. If you want to retire at 60 years old, your number is going to be 2401 for being 19 years old. Now, you go, well, I'm not 19. I'm 22. I'm 25. I'm whatever I may be in there. Let's assume in, from 19 to 29, you didn't do a thing right? Let's just assume you had a good time. You didn't save a dollar and now you're 29 years old and you go, well, you know, I'm kind of starting the family thing. I'm starting to see the, the, the importance of saving money and everything. All right, Dustin, I'm 29 years old. Let's use the exact same thing. How bad is this going to hurt, right? Because now I didn't save from 19. I started saving at 29. So let's take it and go 29 to 65 and 29 to 60. Right? Let's say you want to retire a little bit early there. If you start at 29 years old, want to retire at 65, with the same 50000 you now have to put in $3,090 in the first year. It's a double. It was only 10 years. It's not like you doubled in age, but 10 years went by, and that's a double. You now have to put away that much money. Look how much harder it gets, right? Imagine when I do this for people that are in their 40s and saying they're trying to play catch up. Yeah, <laughs> some big numbers in there. All right, so... Now let's assume you uh, want to retire at 60 now. 4857 is your number. 4857. It's incredible. You're 29 years old. Now think about what happens. You go, well, that's not that bad, right? I got a good job. I'm 29 years old. I proved myself a little bit. Maybe I'm making some good money. But what also happened? You started a family. You wanted to buy a house. You got student loan debt. You got a spouse that won't quit spending money on random stuff. You're working on getting your budget straight. You now make more money, can save more money, but you have more responsibilities. It gets so much tougher. I'm telling you, it gets so much tougher when you get older. Vouch for me. If you are in the comment section there, let me know. If you're 19 and you're like, holy cow, I didn't realize it was that easy. I'll get started. Of course, I hope you'll keep us in mind here at Jazz Wealth. We work with investors of all sizes. I will get your dough straight with you and make you not make any silly mistakes there with your money as you go. But let me know in the comment section uh, if you're older and you're like, holy cow, you got to pay attention to this or something. Um, if there's another sort of formula I can work out for you guys you want to see, let me know. The goal of today was to get the young people excited about investing. And if you're young and you have no idea, give us a shot. We will not take advantage of, we don't have any way to take advantage of you. By business model, you keep your own account. We just manage it. We use our own funds. They're expense-free funds. I will help you with every aspect of your financial life. If you're buying a house, getting married, all of a sudden you're making more money, anything that happens to you, credit card debt, and you need help with that, you now have a place that you can go to, a person you can call, email, whatever, and say, what's the right thing to do with my money? That's what we're really trying to set out to do, no matter how much money you have. So keep us in mind, but again, the goal to get you guys saving money. I don't care where the market's at. Everybody's like, markets are high, I don't wanna save. I don't care, you're 19 years old, the markets are gonna fall like 20 more times before you retire. You got time. Start with the numbers there. Um, hope you enjoyed, and uh, we'll see you later on the closing beat, 5 o'clock Eastern, on our YouTube channel. It's a live show. We cover the stock market. We'll tell you exactly what happened throughout the day in the stock market, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Why should you choose Jazz Wealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours.